Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, Dominica denounces U.S. designation of Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism. The High Court to link up to an OECSE litigation portal by mid-2021. And CARICOM calls for a global summit for equitable access and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. The details coming up. We are resilient and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. First up in the news, Foreign Affairs Minister Kenneth Daru issued a statement Friday denouncing the designation of Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism by the United States. Minister Daru says Dominica stands with the government and people of Cuba who, in spite of the 60-year-old U.S. economic embargo, has been a leader in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica denounce in its entirety the designation by the United States of America of the Republic of Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism, and we stand in full support with the progressive, hard-working, brotherly people of Cuba. Dominica therefore joins other world leaders in expressing complete solidarity with the Republic of Cuba, particularly during this SARS-CoV-19 pandemic, when Cuba has proven to be one of the few countries equipped to fight this global pandemic. History will record the Republic of Cuba as the only country to mobilize medical brigades to assist governments worldwide to help contain the spread of this COVID-19 virus. Despite being stifled by a 60-year-old economic embargo, Cuba's domestic healthcare system is widely acclaimed and applauded for being community-based, prevention-oriented, of high quality, and free to its populace. Additionally, the Republic of Cuba has generated important innovations in cancer and AIDS research and created the world's first vaccine against meningitis B. Cuba therefore deserves the support of progressive people everywhere, and after 25 years of brotherly bilateral and diplomatic relations, the government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica proudly embrace and stand in full solidarity with the government and people of the Republic of Cuba. We again therefore take this opportunity to again express total and unreserved support to the government and people of Cuba against any attempt to classify or designate them as a state sponsor of terrorism. The government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica again reiterates the call to immediately put an end to the most unfair and inhumane and enduring economic embargo in modern history. In other news now, Calypso lovers will have to wait one more week to enjoy a live Calypso performance. This, as the opening of the Stardom Calypso tent has been postponed to the 23rd of January. The tent was initially scheduled to open on the 16th of this month. However, Chairman of the Stardom Tent Management, Norman Letan, says there were some hiccups along the way. We really wanted to, to start on the 16th, but... Um Everything, um, there were some little problems. Um, not everyone is ready. You remember, the Calypsonians have to record, they have to practice, etc. So, um, and we figure it's better we start strong than we start weak. Everybody say Calypsonians are not good this year. And I've been hearing quite a few of these songs. These songs are very, very good. So, next year we are going to start at f uh, next week, sorry, 20, 23rd of January. We're going to start at full strength. We'll have all the Calypsonians. And the rest of the show is going to have a wonderful show. The original plan was to host five tents during the season, with the first being on the 16th of January. Leader says despite the delay, five tents might still be possible. 
Well, we are definitely having four, but we may have a fifth. And you can, you can never tell. If it's really coming good, you know, we may have a fifth and a sixth. But um, let, it, let us see how it starts. Everything is working out okay so far. We, we are satisfied. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, we have the tents. We're supposed to be getting two tents. They are already at Old Middle Cultural Center. So we are definitely starting on the 23rd. Due to the limited number of patrons allowed at events as a result of the COVID-19 health protocols, tickets for Stardom Tent are being sold in advance. And Leighton says this is going well. Actually, we already had a lot of tickets. Um, I, I, I want to say sold. We hadn't sold out then, but people had booked tickets already, several. So I know we're going to sell out early. And the fans can, can rest assured they're going to have a good show. 20 Calypsonians are due to perform at each staging of the Stardom Calypso tent. Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Janice Pereira, says some OECS member states have fallen behind in the effort to reduce their case backlog. The Chief Justice raised the issue in her address at the opening of the new law year this week. At the High Court level, throughout the court's jurisdiction, a total of 7,450 cases were filed and 4,384 were disposed. Antigua and Barbuda and St. Lucia remain the states with the highest caseload by number. The clearance rates from the high courts varied between 91% in St. Lucia and 30% in Grenada. None of the high courts recorded a clearance rate above 100%. This points to an accumulation of case backlog. Furthermore, on average, the overall clearance rate of member states and territories as a grouping continuously declined over the last three years and was at its lowest at 59% in 2019. This flags a dire need for continued and more robust measures to be implemented in those member states and territories which are falling behind. It requires an all-hands-on-deck approach by all stakeholders to arrest and reverse this trend. Chief Justice Pereira says the factors impacting this trend are many, but in large measure reflect the persistent shortcomings of physical, human and financial resources. Unfortunately, over the last year, the COVID-19 pandemic significantly hampered the court's ability to effectively manage its caseload and has laid bare the weaknesses and challenges faced in an already under-resourced environment. In several of our member states and territories, the pandemic grounded the conduct of jury trials due mostly to our inability to provide the required proper physical distancing protocols in many of our existing courtrooms. The simple truth is that many of our courtrooms are too small and in some cases not enough. In the COVID-19 environment, it is impossible to have jurors sit elbow to elbow. The question then becomes, what is the solution to this dilemma? In my view, the time is ripe for all governments in consultation with civil society to engage in discussions on the implementation of judge alone criminal trials for specific case types within the context and framework of the constitutional mandate of fair trials within a reasonable time. She says judge alone trials are not new in the region and have enjoyed much success in reducing the case backlog in a number of territories. Teachers encouraged to give back to the teaching community when they make advancements in the sector, Andrea Louis explains. During the opening ceremony of the Status of Women Committee of the Dominica Association of Teachers on Friday, 
Former president of the association, Celia Nicholas, challenged participants to remember where they came from when they move up the ladder. She said several educators have benefited from trainings and workshops organized by the DAT but have not shared the knowledge gained with their colleagues. And teachers, when you move away from the classroom and you have improved and enhanced yourself, remember, thus where you came from. It hurts me that so many individuals have benefited from workshops overseas, regionally, even internationally, from the Dominican Association of Teachers, and they have not come back to give. And I follow up those things there, eh? even at the school level. And as Ms. Rightly said, what you are going to get today you don't keep it for yourself. You don't keep it for yourself. It is counterproductive. Teachers were reminded to be dedicated to their profession despite the challenges they may face. Teachers, you ought not to love your profession by half. You understand what I mean by that? You cannot love your profession by half. No. You have to love your profession by whole. So as I normally tell individuals, if you don't love it, leave it. I'm serious. You leave it. You have to create a psychological space that the negatives do not go to you to change you. Nicholas also reminded educators that they need to be positive role models for the youth who they teach. We are in the modeling profession. We model to our students. We don't want half work from our students. What is that? I teach you so, what is that? Look at how the work is presented. Yesterday I teach that. Where were you? We don't want any half and quarter work and eighth work from our students. So why should we be half professionals. The week-long workshop is being held under the theme, empowering women to create a sustainable environment during periods of adversity and crisis. Andrea Lui, Channel 5 News. This is Channel 5 News. We'll have more. Please stay with us. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. The High Court is expected to be fully linked up to the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court's e-litigation portal by the middle of 2021. Dominica is among three jurisdictions in the OECS not yet taking full advantage of the electronic linking of the courts in the region. Only six of the nine member states are linked to the e-litigation portal. As many of you know, the e-litigation portal is a platform providing for the electronic filing of court documents and it facilitates electronic service, case management, and document workflow. The electronic linking of the courts across the nine member states and territories is not some fanciful or obtuse idea. It was vital for the effective operations of the court if improved access to justice for the citizens of the Eastern Caribbean is to be fully realized 
in the face of our vulnerabilities to natural disasters and now a pandemic. The e-litigation portal is now in place in six of our nine member states and territories. It has made a positive difference in so many ways. The ease of filing, the ease of serving, the ease of paying, and the ease of accessing and managing electronic documents from anywhere. Despite natural disasters and despite the current pandemic, since it requires no social distancing or health protocols in order to make use of it. The Chief Justice says the e-litigation portal is also a cost-saving mechanism. It is the use of this system where it is in place that has enabled the Court of Appeal and other courts to continue to deliver on its work in a timely fashion. Plans are already in progress to link the remaining three member states. Achieving full implementation was slowed due to COVID-19 and the resultant travel restrictions. It is my hope that by July this year, all our member states and territories will be linked to the e-litigation portal. I know that legal practitioners in the remaining states of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, and St. Vincent, and the Grenadines are anxiously awaiting this step. It is fair to say that the e-litigation portal has demonstrated in this COVID-19 era the critical role it plays in keeping the operations of the court in motion. In those member states not yet linked to the portal, we made provisions for email filings and service by email. This was achieved by the passing of emergency practice directions, a practice guide, and the adoption of remote hearing protocols, all of which are still in effect. These have ensured a measure of continuity of the court's operations even as various levels of lockdown were in place. Indeed, there is no doubt that ICT-driven courts are here to stay. CARICOM Council of Ministers, the community's second highest decision-making organ, has further denounced the unilateral declaration by the United States which designated Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism. The Council met virtually on Friday with a packed agenda. The heads of government emphasized their unswervering support for Guyana in the border controversy with Venezuela. They also called for a global summit to address equitable access and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccines to combat the pandemic. Friday's virtual meeting also sought to advance preparations for next month's 32nd intersessional meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government. The meeting of the Community Council concludes a hectic week which began with the 13th Special Emergency Meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government held virtually on Tuesday. That meeting received an update on the Caribbean Economic Recovery and Transformation Plan. This plan is being devised by a regional team of experts under the leadership of the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley. That special emergency meeting was presided over by the chair of the conference, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, and the leaders took the opportunity to discuss other urgent matters. And strong admonition for whoever is responsible for dumping illegally in the city center. Here's Andrea Louis with more. The reprimand from manager of the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation, Florian Mitchell, as employees of the corporation and the general public were recently greeted with this site on Virgin Lane. Mitchell says such dumping is frowned upon by the institution and warned the individual to dispose of the waste properly or else he will face the full extent of the law. In the Virgin Lane area, um, a particular individual um, cleared their property and that the material was disposed on the side of the road which is the curb um, that is an offense and the person when identified will be ticketed and if 
the individual fails to comply with the ticket, the individual will be brought before the law. Illegal and improper dumping takes place all over the island and the Soil Waste Management Corporation has gone on extensive sensitization campaigns to inform the public of the appropriate ways to get rid of solid waste. We noticed that a vehicle in the Campbell area, whether or not the person was contracted by an individual or solely conducting the activity um, for themselves, um, again, the, the owner of the vehicle will be again brought to before the court if they do not comply with the removal of, 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 of no, a little notice. And they also will be ticketed for the, for the, for the offence that they have committed. Again, um, the government of Dominica we has, has spent millions of dollars in trying to keep our nature island clean, green and beautiful post hurricane Maria. I mean a lot of money have been spent in, in conducting white goods, clean up, removal of derelict throughout the island. Mitchell reiterated his call to the public to play their part to keep Dominica clean and green. We should not be disposing of, of those items illegally. We should not be putting it out on the roadside. I mean we are cleaning, it is our responsibility to contract um, a vehicle, haul it to the relevant location that is the focal center of the landfill and and culprits will be ticketed and brought before the court so i want to appeal to general public please desist from such practices illegal dumping littering is something we will be pursuing um for the year i mean we have done a lot a lot a lot to 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 to, to bridge the gap in terms of our functional ability to help the public and we we, we condone those activities and if you are living in communities and you see people doing those things, please contact the Dominica Soil Waste Management Authority. At the end of the day, we are the ones who live in the communities. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts, with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. strong we are resilient and we will get through this together but these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care it's normal to feel overwhelmed anxious or afraid but there is hope reach out to someone connect with your friends stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone we're in this together this is a public service announcement from the dominica red cross a new in-home experience is here all your services bundled into one simple plan Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. To end the news, the headlines again, Dominica denounces U.S. designation of Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism. The High Court to link up to an OECS e-litigation portal by mid-2021 and CARICOM calls for a global summit for equitable access and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccines. You may access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Have a good weekend.